William Blake has said, if the doors to perception were cleansed, then everything would appear as it is, infinite. Today, our culture is so rational, so technical, so in need of concrete answers and evidences, that it has closed its door on a whole framework of perception that could give us awareness in everyday life and nudge us in the direction of health and happiness. Intuition, a way of seeing, hearing, and feeling with insight and understanding is the language of the soul. And even science agrees that its power can have enlightening consequences to change the way we pay attention to ourselves and our world, to help us view illness as a sign to examine imbalance in our lives. And intuition can even make us experts in our own healing. I'm Audrey Hope. Please join me on this next episode of Real Women for Intuition, the Language of the Soul. My special guest is Mona Lisa Schultz, who will help us tap into our own intuitive network so that we can make positive changes in our lives. Okay, so the emotion that you have gets placed in the body and you get ill in that particular area. Right. It's a very simplified way to look at illness and a lot of people may have a problem with that. Um, well, they think it's the blame thing. Yeah, that's what okay. I want to say. Let's the just blame. say the blame. Okay, yeah. I'm responsible for my illness, and someone who has cancer and is very ill might get very angry at that. Well, it's not that you're responsible for it, meaning that you're the blame for it. You're responsive to it, which means when you experience an emotion, the cells in your bra brain release hormones, peptides, the same hormones and peptides that your body releases when it functions. So the reality is, when you experience an emotion, so does your body at the same time. Uh -huh. And if that emotion is held too long, your body holds it too long in its tissue and it will start to complain through symptoms of illness. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if you don't know that something is wrong, mm -hmm. your body is going to let you know. Yes. Does that mean you caused your cancer? No. What it means is that your cancer is like one of those warning bells, warning lights on the dashboard telling you, stop, look at your life. Reevaluate mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the place of breasts. Reevaluate issues around partnership, yeah. issues around nurturance in partnership, mm -hmm. martyrdom in partnership, or, or patterns of emotional expression in partnership. For example, do you know that women with breast cancer have a higher rate, have, a, have higher rates of hiding their emotions behind a brave and stoic face? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that brave and stoic women cause breast cancer? No, it doesn't mean that at all. What it lets me know is, is that if my mother had breast cancer, which she did, uh -huh. um, that I want to reduce my risk factors to develop breast cancer, right? So I want to look at all the things that are related to breast cancer, the things that I can change, like my diet, low fat, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That if I have a loss in my family, you know, the situ situation that's related to breast cancer, that I express fully my grief. In addition, I don't want to be a martyr, and I try to change those patterns in my life that have been associated, not caused, but associated with breast cancer. The same thing with heart disease. Uh -huh. Men who have unresolved, unresolved, unexpressed hostility, they look like pots boiling over, <laughs> they have a higher risk of having heart attacks, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. Uh -huh. Not everyone in our culture can make sense of that. We have no problems telling those guys to stop smoking, lose weight, exercise, and get out of those stressful jobs. But we do have an issue with saying, now let's talk about the emotional patterns that are associated with heart disease. And in fact, men who've had a heart attack, the ones that are put in groups where they're taught to fully express their hostility and resolve it, actually, it lowers the risk of having further heart attacks and, and it actually makes them live longer. Wow. Women with breast cancer, when they learn to be less stoic, fully express their emotions and get supportive, nurturing relationships, as a study published by Spiegel, actually live longer and have less complications from their illness. So you see, blaming isn't good because blaming paralyzes the person who's ill. It removes them from mm -hmm. a place where they can't listen to their body because they feel they're, they caused this and they're the blame. Right. But what it does do is says, okay, listen to what your body might be telling you. What is your illness forcing you to reevaluate in your life? Beautifully said, Mona Lisa. Beautifully said. I really understand it. Um, so how could one become a medical intuitive? Let's say I want to learn to you know, be intuitive, what, what can I do? Well, you've got a body, you're sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is you sleep, 
and you got two brains because your, your head looks symmetrical. So the reality <laughs> is to find out which one of those things you use most often. Because right now you already are intuitive. Uh -huh. You, and you probably already know that, but the idea is how to do it more and do it better. A um, woman, a, a country singer, Darley Parton, mm -hmm. says find out who you are and do it on purpose and then do more. <laughs> and the reality is, is in, in this book, I described the various flavors of intuitives. So there are lots of different medical intuitives. Carolyn Mace is a theologian. She talks about energy centers. I'm a physician medical intuitive, and I see organs. When I see a person's body, I see organs. Can Carolyn you see sees, mine right now? No, because because you're in front of me. Oh, I see. You have to, I, was, I wanted to ask you that. No, no, no. Do you have to be like alone in a room for I can't, you personally? No, there are can, cats can be in the room. No, what I mean is <laughs> people can be in the room, but what I'm saying is you have to be. Um, you can't be in the building. I see. Interesting. Okay. Um, I can't see you because as I was a person, just wondering. I'm as a curious. person, well, you know what I'm saying. As a person, how do I know that I'm not using these eyes or my intuitive mm -hmm. eyes? Are you following mm -hmm. me? But anyway, you know, uh, Einstein wrote that equation: E equals m c squared. Yes. Energy equals matter, accelerated. Some people who are theologians or chakra-based intuitives, they see energy, and they see chakras. I wouldn't know a chakra if I tripped over it. I don't see energy. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the equation. I see the matter. I see organs, mm -hmm. and I see people, emotions in the person's life. Various scenarios, like the husband, he goes out on Friday and Saturday night, he's got the perfume. Why are you sitting home in the house dress? By the way, you got a rash. The whole thing. So that's, <laughs> and then you relate the two. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do as a medical intuitive. Um, some people are left brain dominant intuitives. They're usually right-handed. They like to read. They write a lot. They took those classes in college where there's a lot of papers. Chances are those people are brain intuitives, mm -hmm. so they have symbolic dreams, and th their dreams might herald illness in their body as well as the bodies of their loved one, and their, their dreams might also give them information on how to solve problems in their life. Some people who have, um, have different quirks, your quirks are your genius. Um, people mm -hmm. who are hyperactive, um, they're body intuitives. They might act out intuition but not be able to say it. So I can always tell when people are having affairs. If I go out to dinner, <laughs> you, you know, in New England, no one looks like they're after people with, the, I mean, they, everyone's sitting there with the ties and they're all very serious. But I can always, and they might be sitting at opposite ends, but I can always tell if they're having an affair. Because I always, if they have a candle at the, ta the table, I'll start to play with the fire. And I'll, I'll put the, you know, the, um, the sugar cubes near it, and then the thing catches on fire and it, and it lands on the tablecloth. So I start to act out the fire of I the see. passion of the person involved. And various friends of mine know this now, and then they kind of, once I've set the, the table on fire, they ask me to the ladies' room and they kind of say, you know, what's going on at the table? <laughs> <laughs> you also say you have this test for a good mate. Oh, you can, yeah. yeah. You can tell which way. Can you explain that a little bit? You test? can tell a lot about a person's capacity for intuition or what hemisphere they're on, mm -hmm. or what, you know, what cylinders they're firing on. There are little things that you can do. Um, <laughs> I was telling a friend of mine, you can go to the beach and just by the way people set up their chairs and the way they organize their lunch and their shoes. Yeah. If someone lines their shoes up a certain way, you can tell their brain organization versus someone who takes a shoe off, flings it, takes another <laughs> one, flings it. If you're at the table with a prospective mate, you say, you know, I'm, you go, oh my God, I dropped a fork. You drop your fork. <laughs> and then you say, can you go over to that table and get me a fork? If they get up, go over, get the fork, and turn to the left, they're usually left brain dominant, and they're right-handed, and be, they, they have some difficult intuitive gifts that it wouldn't be easy. However, if they go up to the table, they take it through the right hand and then turn to the right, chances are they're probably in more in their right brain and probably more intuitive. <laughs> so you can tell, I mean, you can also get them to draw things, and <laughs> by the end of that, they probably don't want to be involved with you anyway, because they, they know you're interviewing them, and they're being evaluated. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for one more question. I want to ask why women are more intuitive. I mean, through, actually, through the centuries, and a and, 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 uh, very important point, which I want to get in here, is that we get wiser as we go through menopause, and, um, and we need to embrace women as we get older. Well, the deal is, is that there's this thing about women that they're cyclic, and Joan and I talked about this in her book. Um, Chris Northup and I actually um, figured this out back she was doing Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, that book, and I was doing a lot of the research mm -hmm. behind it. That women, their wisdom comes, their intuition comes up really before their menstrual cycle because they're more in their right brain. Mm -hmm. So, you believe it or not, as your ovaries are cycling, 
So is your brain, so is your intuition. So it's lights on, lights off, lights on, lights off, wax on, wax off. But when you hit menopause, instead of having cyclic intuition, it gets stuck on. And that's why they used to throw all those women, they used to call them crones and throw them in the huts. Because they were not afraid only of them. <laughs> that's yeah, because they want to hear what they have to say. But I don't want you to think that men <laughs> don't have intuition. I mean, they didn't throw them in the huts, they placed them carefully. But, <laughs> but the men, they do have intuition. And I know this for a fact. I, we don't know how, you know, if men's testicles cycle, I'm not quite sure. But, but we do know one thing. Testipause. <laughs> Testipause, exactly. But we do know one thing. And I learned this. I was doing a TV program somewhere down south. And you know, it's one of those morning shows where there's a kitchen set up. And yes, then the guy, yes, and yes. then there's a, there's a weatherman, and then there's a guy who does sports. And so there was this guy who, he was a sportscaster, but he stole the rolling pin from the set for the, for the kitchen show. And he's playing baseball with one of the cameramen with the artificial fruit. Anyway, he ended up interviewing me. And he, he says to me, because he used to be apparently be like football uh, star, and he said, you know, we men have intuition too. And I said, really? And he says, oh yeah. He said, we always know where someone is behind us. He said, we have body intuition. And he's right. And so we, all of us, have intuition. The idea is to find out who you are and do it on purpose. Thank you, Mona Lisa. It was such a pleasure to have you.